We defeated Russia in the battle for minds of the world. Ukrainian courage and American resolve must guarantee the future of our common freedom, the freedom of people who stand for their values. Your money is not charity. It's an investment in the global security and democracy that we handle in the most responsible way. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's stirring address to a joint session of Congress is monumentally historic, but not unprecedented. Most comparisons have referenced another wartime leader, Winston Churchill, calling to defend democracy in 1941. But ever since King David Kalkawa of the Kingdom of Hawaii became the first to address the U.S. Congress in 1874 on a trip that would set in motion the annexation of his kingdom, American lawmakers have welcomed foreign leaders to make speeches that frequently are not apolitical. In 1990, Nelson Mandela addressed Congress four months after being freed from 27 years in an apartheid prison. Mandela received an ovation from a packed House, never mind that dozens of mostly Republican House members voted against a bill calling for his release four years earlier, including Wyoming's Dick Cheney, who defended his vote calling Mandela a terrorist. In 2015, House Republicans blindsided the Obama administration by inviting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to denounce the Iran nuclear deal that the administration was negotiating. The politics of now is a Republican Party that includes some members who openly support the Putin line. Only 86 of 213 House Republicans attended President Zelensky's address last night. Some who did, Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates, wouldn't stand for applause lines when they weren't refusing to look up from their phones. Among those absent was Missouri Republican Josh Hawley. Here's, what, here's why he said he skipped it. I didn't go to the speech because I, I didn't want to be part of a photo op asking for more money from the United States government when they haven't given us a single piece of accounting on anything they spent. Mm -hmm, that's right. Insurrection fist pumper Josh Hawley didn't want to be part of a photo op. Yeah, okay, sport. More than any other European leader... President Zelensky represents the triumph of democracy in standing up to Vladimir Putin, just as he once stood up to our own disgraced former president in his attempt to subvert democracy. When Donald Trump asked Zelensky to just do us a favor and pretend to investigate Joe Biden for Trump's political gain, the extortion attempt that got him impeached the first time. I'm joined now by Matthew Dowd, founder of Country Over Party and chief strategist for the Bush Cheney 2004 presidential campaign. Matthew, it's great to be here. Uh, you know, and, and I, I thought a lot about it. In our morning call this morning, we were talking a lot about the Zelensky, Zelensky as a, as a historical figure, but also as a figure who is very wrapped up in all of Trump's other scandals. I just want to play for you. This is what Trump said to Zelensky at the United Nations. This is in September of 2019. This is real quick. I really hope that you and President Putin get together and can solve your problem. That would be a tremendous achievement. And I know you're trying to do that. I mean, you can see the look on his face, highly contrasted with the look on his face as he finally got the presidential meeting he wanted with Joe Biden, whose son the right is trying to take down because they want it to be analogous to what Trump did to Hillary Clinton or was, was done to Hillary Clinton in 2016. It's kind of mind blowing. But what do you make of it? Well, I know I know you probably agree with what I'm about to say, which is, is I don't think this is any surprise that the Republicans acted this way in Congress at this point in time. I say, I've often thought, why would they support democracy, you know, 4,000 miles away when they don't support it here? So why would they support it in another country when they don't support it here? And while we see them support, you know, anti-democratic presidents of, of, of Hungary, in the midst of this. And so, unfortunately, it's not surprising. And unfortunately, this has become the standard operating procedure of the Republican Party today, which now seems more pro-Russian than pro-democracy in the midst of this. So leaving President Zelensky hanging out to dry, if just like they left any number of secretary of states <laughs> and election workers in America hanging out to dry in the yeah. midst of this. So it's not surprising to me. You're not going to support democracy in one country if you don't support it in your own.
You know, what's fascinating, though, is that the Republican Party back in your day uh, was, you know, styled itself as really a national security party. It was really centered on the idea of opposing the USSR, of still fighting sort of Cold War politics, right? Even a lot of the neoconservatives, they were, you know, Scoop Jackson Democrats, right? They were, they were, they supported sort of liberal social values, but also really sort of a strong stance on Russia, on the Soviet, on the old Soviet Union. But now you have Fox News, which is Republican state TV, going all in, mocking Zelensky. Call, what did Tucker call him? A nightclub, uh, strip club manager. You know, other shows there, mocking him, belittling him, going after what he wore, that he didn't wear a top hat and tails when he addressed Congress. The guy's country is at war with Russia. Russia has invaded it. And it's like Fox News is sort of centering the Republican Party on remaining with Putin, even as this guy is making history as probably the most important European leader in many ways. Well, I think this is, as you've watched this history, I know you watched it well, it's it's not only that are they not the president of Lincoln anymore, and that went off the rails a long time ago, and they're long not time. the president of Teddy Roosevelt, and they're not the president, the, the party of Dwight D. Eisenhower. They're no longer the party of Ronald Reagan, whose probably most memorable line, if you ask most Americans, is Mr. Gorbachev, please tear down this wall as he confronted the Soviet Union in the midst of all that was going on in their anti-democratic ways in this. Again, I, I, I think it's a fundamental thing. When Republicans say America first, which is what they constantly kind of try to say, what they really mean is democracy last. That's really what they mean when they say America first. It's not about our principles anymore and the narrative and common story that all of us have short shared about a constitution and the will of the people and a government by, for, and for the people. It is about a, an ability to push through whatever you want, whatever by whatever means necessary in this. And so it, it doesn't surprise me that they're in sync now with Vladimir Putin, who espouses the, basically the exact same things, which is, I'm going to hold power for power's sake, and it doesn't matter who I run over or what I do or what country I invade. If I can get what I want, that's what I want. That's what the Republican yeah. Party has become. It's the least of which it's not anything close to the, to the last two Bushes. But it's a party that they used to claim Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan would be shocked at what's going on. And he would be run out of the party. He'd be considered a rhino. I mean, the, he could, you know, the, he could enjoy. He could not. If Ronald Reagan ran today in the Republican nomination, Ronald Reagan would probably finish fifth or sixth in a Republican primary. Easily, easily. I mean, and, and I mean, the, the stuff that they're saying on Fox is getting replayed on Russian state TV. That's how much they love Tucker. That's how much they love it. And you do have this realignment, really. I mean, the NRA is down with Russia. It's just this total Russia realignment. It's bizarre. But I, I, let, let's talk about Zelensky himself just for a moment. One of the one of the sort of theories about why the the right hates him is that he stood up to Trump and that he's the reason Trump got impeached. And that's one of the problems with him. Do you, number one, do you think that that might be the case? And number two, give us some historical context on where do you think he lands in terms of the history of this current era? So the first point is, I, I don't know if they'd even think that far through. I don't even know if they connect any of those dots, because I don't think it's fundamentally about that. I do think it's fundamentally about they are supportive of people that exert power and are able to exert their power by any means necessary, as I said. And so I think it's much more about they like Vladimir Putin's style of leadership, unfortunately, and the way he conducts yeah. himself in all that manner. And so I think it has less to do with Zelensky and much more to do with the style of leadership they like and want to emulate here and what Donald Trump wanted to emulate here. The second thing, the sec your second question on Zelensky, I think President Zelensky on a global scale is going to be go down as one of the most pro-democratic and interestingly yeah. enough, pro-American, pro-American in, in what our fundamental ideas are than any yeah. leader that I've seen in the last 50 years. He actually is acting more like an American patriot in how he's acting than most members of the Republican Party. Isn't that crazy? And Putin, you know, depending on if that story is true, might go down for falling down some stairs and pooping himself. So that could happen as well. <laughs> Matthew Dowd, I don't know. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Matthew Dowd. Always great to see you.